Last night, La Palma reminded us who's in charge of when this eruption stops. One of the more action-packed nights as far as monitoring La Palma took place last night, just a few hours ago into this morning. This is more than likely the cause and effect of those high-grade 5.0 earthquakes we had all in a short period of time last week, finally showing its face through the mouth of the volcano itself. And I don't know about you, but do you remember when seeing a shooting star or catching one on film was a rare and special event? Well, according to websites like American Meteor Society, this situation is becoming less and less rare. Just ask Ruth Hamilton out of British Columbia. It seems that all you have to do these days is go to sleep and the meteor fairy will come leave one on your pillow. Okay, okay, maybe that won't happen again, but what is happening is a very big rise in meteor sightings and reports. Not just in the United States, all over the world. But when you do take a close look, already the month of November is showing to be one of the busier months when it comes to to meteors and asteroids. We're going to take a look at these reports and sightings, and we're going to go over the latest information at La Palma. I hope everyone got some extra rest overnight last night. Appreciate you all. We're going to break it all down right now. Here we go. <laughs> Happy Sunday, my friends. It is November 7th, 2021, and we're going to start right here with La Palma. It was rocking last night. The eruption status, four out of five, and the updated articles coming out of Volcano Discovery were posted, and it's mostly about the ash advisories. Now, those are going to continue because we had a long night of eruptions. Now, we're going to take a look at something here that involves the earthquake situation, and keep in mind, two of our biggest earthquakes that have taken place over this 49-day eruption now took place in the last seven days. Not not only that, but it may be slight, but seven days ago was a 5.0. It was actually higher than that. And then three days later, four days ago, we had the biggest of all these earthquakes take place. Now, we've been saying here on the channel that we believe this is movement of magma and or the ground underneath collapsing as a result of the moving magma because we start to see a theme. Once we see these earthquakes move in a pattern or in a quicker group towards the mouth of the volcano, it's about 24 hours after that that we see a very large eruption or what we saw last night. Many people thinking this volcano was calming down and then last night put on quite a show as you can see in some of the timeline footage. Now we may not have our 5.0 earthquakes going off every day now, but when we look at the 4.0 and higher earthquakes we start to get a better idea that the, the ground under La Palma is still moving still shifting, and as I switch to just all magnitudes over 24 hours, it's just a matter of time before we start hitting those 4.5 to 5.0 earthquakes again just in the last 24 hours we can see a slow trend of these earthquakes moving closer to the mouth. This one 18 hours ago, a little bit to the north. 11 hours ago, we ping to the west. 10 hours ago, we move straight up 20 minutes ago. And as we get closer and closer to the mouth, we see that all these are recent earthquakes within the last few hours. This will more than likely lead to another long night and day of eruptions. As far as the numbers go at La Palma since the beginning of this eruption, we have entered our 50th day of activity. Simply unbelievable. And take a look at this stat. 18 earthquakes registered in La Palma overnight, the largest being a 4.0. That is a large number of earthquakes to take place during the dark hours. It's always good to see aid going to those on the island. We can see a trend now of the tremors and earthquakes being talked about a lot more over the last 24 hours after a lot of officials were saying this was calming down. It does not seem to be the case anymore. And we are now at a whopping 35,000 plus earthquakes and tremors involved with this eruption since the start. I will be monitoring the volcano overnight tonight to bring you any sort of updates needed for tomorrow. And I appreciate each and every one of you that have been sending me the updated info and keeping us all informed on a daily basis. All right, my friends, sorry we got lost in that for so long. We're gonna switch gears now and take a look at the skies above. And once again, we're gonna be talking about the meteorite situation and the clear uptick in sightings and reports, not only in the United States, but the world as a whole. In fact, when it comes to outside the US, on November 3rd, a very big meteor sighting was reported by 126 people, and that's just on this website alone. Some of these visuals were absolutely spectacular overseas. This one in particular stuck out to me, uploaded to American Meteor Society. I will leave the link in the description box. Take a look at that green color. That is just awesome. Now, what I want to do is just touch base a little bit more on the United States slash Canada sightings, because we've had a theme going on this channel where we've been following the Northeast specifically a lot 
lot of sightings, even meteorites. Those are the ones that hit the ground. This event in particular was on November 5th, and it was seen from areas of Toronto and Ontario, Canada, all the way down the northeast into the United States. And something interesting I want to show you about the month of November so far. Now, October itself was a very busy month, but take a look at November just in the United States and Canada. We are talking every single day from Halloween leading up to current time. Although we only have reports to the 5th, I can guarantee you we have reports from the 6th and the 7th being posted right now. But take a look at this. On November 1st, we had three different events take place between Canada and the United States. One of those events had 25 witnesses. I believe two of these took place closer to the West Coast, but the overall idea here is that the Northeast Toronto, Ontario, the Northeast of the United States, is having a clear uptick in meteor sightings and reports. Now, and I mean, come on, take a look at this. This was a very big sighting, clearly seen by many, many people, a lot more than the 74 reporting this. And when we get a lot of eyes on something, usually we get the visuals as well. This is credit to Keystone College right here. Thomas C. Cupolari snapped this image. Very big, bright fireball. And then we got this image from Chastity D. A little bit of an odd shape, it looks like to me. Right over a bridge. I'm not sure where this is exactly. In the Northeast, I know it's in New York somewhere. That's the reason why I love these verification websites that take individual reports and verify them and don't just post anything that someone submits. Because once we get enough data involved with a sighting, we can really start pinpointing where it came from, the angle, the trajectory, which we can do at any time. Right now, I'm just concerned with the amount of them we're seeing. It seems like every day is almost a major meteor sighting and if we're not careful we might start becoming complacent to this my friends i want to thank you all so much for watching this video on your sunday i'm going to be dissecting the nor'easter season slash the nor'easter train we're going to be seeing very soon here in the northeast i'm sure a lot of you have been waiting for that and i'm going to break that all down for us tomorrow until then i hope you all have a good day a good rest of your weekend shout out to canada and i'll see you all in the next video small message at the end take care bye bye stop right there my friends if you have not already click that subscribe button and don't forget to hit the bell icon, click 